Hello and welcome back to The Drag Detective, where today we are going to be diving a little bit into All-Stars 8, which has proven so far to be kind of controversial. Fans are not fully pleased with what we've been given so far, and, you know, watching it myself, I kind of feel the same way. So we're going to dive into some of the things that are going wrong and awry with the season, and we're going to specifically compare it to All-Stars 6, because... I mean, I just watched Jack do an amazing video on this very topic, and he kind of hit all the nails on the head for what isn't working. So in this video, I want to specifically compare it to All-Star 6. Look at what worked with All-Star 6 and what is not working with this. Because just looking at them, like, you know, from afar, you would say, well, these kind of seem very similar. Like, how can people love one and then feel so meh about the other? Also, apologies. I know I'm behind on my podcast <laughs> a couple weeks. I've gotten some tags from you guys. Um, I had a very busy couple of weeks. Saw Sasha Colby, insert video right here. I promise we're not done with the pod. The pod isn't going anywhere, just a little bit behind. I'm about to have a very crazy summer when it comes to just the amount of, of shit I have going on. So if we fall a little bit behind sometimes, I apologize, but I promise I'm doing my best. I would love if you could subscribe. You know, when we hit that 75K, I will be getting into a full drag makeover. So get excited for that or horrified for that, depending on, you know, how that's going to turn out. Also, I am currently looking for an animator for this secret project that I talked about last week. So if you are an animator and want to get paid for being an animator, uh, hit me up. I'll throw my email in the description below as well, my work email, so you can send me, you know, your CVs, your portfolios, all of that, to that email if you are interested, and then I will give you some more information on what this secret project is. Yeah, if you are an animator, if you're friends with an animator, if your sister's an animator, or your brother's an animator, I'm looking for one, and we'll be a paid gig. Let's move on to the actual video, why you're here today, All Stars 8. General overview, I'll just give my thoughts going in and then we can dive into the more specifics. <sighs> I'm whelmed. I'm whelmed. And I think that honestly, there is such a high expectation because of how amazing and incredible All Star 6 was that, you know, we're all like, oh, All Star 8 is kind of the same formula. It's probably going to be just as great. And then it's not. So there's that kind of going against it. You know, these like huge expectations. I know a lot of people loved All Star 7. I kind of was whelmed by All Star 7. I mean, I think you guys know this by now. Is I'm not like super high on that season. So I was excited to kind of go back to that like All Star 6 realm. Like, let's get some redemptions. Let's get all of that going. And I feel like <sighs> production's fingers are just all over the season. Obviously, it's like that in every season. But for this season in specific, it just feels kind of like, mm. I'm left feeling like, well, I just watched an episode of Drag Race, the end. You know what I mean? Like, I hope it picks up. I know that this upcoming episode, episode five, is going to be insane just knowing the spoilers. And, you know, I just want to say, I think this is video is going to come out. This video will come out before episode five of All Stars 8. So there will be drama. There will be fights. There will be, you know, things going on. But I want to reiterate to everybody that if you... Go on to these queens' social media, or you tag them in your tweets or whatever, and are being hateful and nasty, you're trash. You're a trash person, and everyone makes fun of you. And everyone says, wow, what an a-hole. What a terrible person. So don't be that person. Because the rest of us are all sitting here going, wow, you're a jerk. And you probably have no friends. Only people with no friends go on to queens' social media and say, you're an ugly bitch. You're disgusting. You're the worst person. Like... Be real, it's 2023, let's move on with our lives. Enjoy the drama that we are going to get, enjoy the entertaining television that these queens are giving to us, and then turn off the television and move on with your life, like the rest of us, normal people do. Will that do anything? No, probably not, but I just have to say my word because I'm, I'm waiting for these stand wars to like pop off 
after this episode and I'm getting very nervous for it. So let's get into why specifically All Stars 6 worked and All Stars 8 is currently four episodes in not working. The first thing I want to talk about is the storylines and specifically like the redemptions. On All Star 6, they felt so earned. They felt like, wow, this queen has really shown how they've changed and their progression and their drag and they're this new level that they weren't on their original season. Like everything felt earned. I'm thinking about Raja. I'm thinking about Kylie Sonique Love. I'm thinking about Trinity K. Bonet. I'm thinking about, in some regards, Jan, you know, with the Rusical. Like all of those things was like, yeah, you know what, like, that feels earned. And, you know, I know some of people don't think Jan should have won the musical, but all these storylines felt like it wasn't forced, it wasn't being pushed, it wasn't being, like, production wanting us to really like this queen, but then the rest of us are actually like, mm. Like, these were queens who I feel naturally just caught everyone's attention on All Star 6 because of how far they had come in their careers. And I feel like because that was the best thing about All Star 6 was these like amazing redemption stories that producers wanted to capture that magic again. But the problem is they're not letting it happen naturally. They're trying to force it. And specifically with La La Re in this supermarket ball, specifically with Jimbo winning episode two and then lip syncing against Pangina. Like they're really trying to like make it happen when it's not necessarily happening. And, and you know, we have queens like James, we have queens like Jessica, we have queens like Heidi, Alexis, uh, you know, there even Darian, who have all come like, leaps and bounds from where they were at in their drag career on their first season. And it feels like we're not really getting much of that. And instead, they're like, just so you know, La La Ri is so much better now at sewing. And then you look at what she made, and it's like, hmm. Well, was she, or are you just telling us that? You know, Jimbo, you know, she's gonna win all these lip syncs. You know, Jimbo, she's, you know, up against Pangina and part two, the remix, and you know, she's so funny. Did you know that Jimbo was funny? And it's like, we get it, we get it. It feels like the storylines that they're choosing to focus on are not happening naturally on the screen. They are made in the editing booth. And that's honestly how I feel right now. That like spark of being like, oh my God, Raja O'Hara? is killing it. She's so much fun to watch. She might be my favorite. What? And especially after, you know, her time on season 11, where like, she didn't really show herself well to the audience. People did not like her. The like moment where everyone was collectively like, is Raja O'Hara the fan favorite? Is Kylie Sonique Love, who, you know, has made, you know, little appearances here and there, but has for the most part, kind of left the knowledge of, of the average Drag Race fan. People were like, who's that? You know, for her to be the fan favorite, what? Like, that was such a cool moment because it happened naturally. This, it's like, oh, I guess we are supposed to like La La Ree's fashion now. But then you look at what she's wearing and it's like, hmm. Do, do we actually feel that way? Or is that just what production wants us to think? So that's the first thing that I think is really making the season struggle is like it doesn't feel natural. The things that I'm like it's telling us to feel, I'm not actually feeling deep down. So there's not that like jovial energy going into a new episode where I'm like, what is Raj O'Hare going to do this week? What's Kylie Sonique Love going to do this week? How are they going to blow my expectations again? Like I'm not feeling that about the people that they want me to feel that way about. <laughs> so it's kind of like, okay. The next thing that I think is kind of making this season a little bit of a slog is that there's really no personal story arcs going on or personal storylines. You know, Jack in his video mentioned that like each season of All-Stars has like a theme to it, like Redemption or Game of Thrones, like da 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 da. This season feels like it's strategy, that the, the overall theme of the season is like Drag Race Survivor. Like the queens are strategizing, the queens are forming alliances and this and this and this. And that's super fun. I mean, that's kind of where I was hoping this show would go, you know, that we would get more strategic stuff, that we would get more queens explaining why they're doing what they're doing and like setting themselves up to be like in a good spot. But I don't want that if it means it's 100% cutting out all of the personal stuff that makes me really care about the queens. I don't care who makes it to the end if I'm not invested in their journeys, if I'm not invested in their like time on the show. You know, thinking to All Star 6, episode one, we get that really fun storyline where Trinity K. Bonet is like, I'm not friends with any of these girls. If I'm in the bottom two, why would they save me? She ends up in the bottom two and they do save her. And then she goes on to make really good relationships with all of the girls. Like there's a story arc. Episode two, we have that like heart wrenching storyline 
with Ginger and Jiggly that was set up in episode one where they're best friends outside the show, but now Ginger has to send her home because that's what she feels like she needs to do to appease everyone in the room. And that's like really hard to watch because Jiggly's like begging her friend for her vote and her friend's like, sorry, sis, you gotta go home. Episode three, we see Silky Nutmeg Ganache go home and kind of talk about how being on the show affected her work career, her getting gigs and things like that, and watching herself back and seeing everyone like just rip her to shreds. And she wants to come back and kind of be smaller. She doesn't want to be herself because she saw that everyone didn't like who she was on season 11. And that was super sad to watch. And then she goes home, and then luckily we get to see her kind of have this triumphant return at the end in the lip sync battle for the whatever when <laughs> when she almost fought her way back into the competition like these are storylines that really make you care about the queens and what's going on i mean jan in episode four we get to hear all about how you know she felt like she was not good enough on season 12 and now she's starting to feel like she is good enough and you know then her whole spiral as the second half of the season goes on like there's very few queens on all star six that don't get much to work with. I mean, even the queens who went home early, like Serena and Silky and uh, Jiggly, they get stuff to do. We get to see them. We get to hear their, like, where they're at, their emotional state in the competition, all these things. We get to hear all about that. And it made everybody fall in love with that cast. And this season, it is so strategy focused. We're not getting any of that. Like, why did we not get any content of Mrs. Kasha Davis and Darian's, like, 20 year long friendship i mean the fact that they threw them in the bottom together when la la re like could have been in that bottom made me think that there was enough content that they were like "Ooh, wouldn't it be juicy to put the two best friends in the bottom two together or like "Ooh, let's do that but we don't get any setup so when they're in the bottom two together we're like okay and honestly if you didn't follow them off the show you might not know that they're like best friends for 20 years that they've ran rochester together like that's the kind of story that like makes you care and that's i think my problem with this season is i i don't care that much like i tune in because it's drag race but i'm not sitting there i'm not like jolting up into bed like oh my god it's drag race time like i was with season 14 or all star 6 like some of these season 12 these seasons that i like love this season it's like oh drag race is on i'm gonna go for a walk and then i'll get back and i'll take a shower and i'll cook some lunch and then i'll put it on you know what I mean? And then I, like, turn it off and I'm like, okay, back to whatever else I was doing. <laughs> like, I'm not, like, fixated on it like I am with really good season. And I think that if they fleshed out these queens, if they made you care about them, then I would feel that. I mean, I think out of everyone, Heidi is probably getting the most emotional content. But, like, I already love Heidi. So, like, everyone already loves Heidi. So it's, like, cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not, like, these queens you aren't expecting to fall in love with that you're suddenly, like... I would jump in front of a bus for Raj O'Hara. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think that is honestly, that's probably the biggest knock against this season is that I just, I don't care about many of the queens. Like, not that I don't care about them, but the show isn't making me care about them like they do in other seasons. So I think that is a big knock against this season. The third thing is that the lip sync assassin format is it's a little tired. <laughs> it's a little tired. Specifically, I mean, All Star 6, I still think there were issues with it, with the fact that every one of the Lipstick Assassins that came on, for the most part, had some kind of, like, relationship to someone who was either in the top or the bottom, like Coco Montrese sending home Serena Chacha, or Brooklyn Heights getting to lip sync with Raj O'Hara, Jessica Wilde sending home Yada Sophia. Like, it was so, like, okay, this is not a coincidence, but um, we're just going to pretend we didn't see that. That kind of vibe is what we got. Okay, so I, I wasn't, I was, like, I was um, a little irked, but I wasn't annoyed on All Star 6. It was like, whatever, because the lip syncs were great. The season was great, like, whatever. But now, it's a little troublesome. Like, Pangina coming on in episode 2, and it's like Jimbo 1, and everyone was like, okay, we see what you're doing. Or like, Raja O'Hara coming on to do Coconuts by Kim Petras, and barely trying, like, giving 50% of what we know Raj O'Hara can do. I mean, it's giving, like, All Stars 5, which was the biggest complaint with the original season. I mean, that was the first Lip Sync Assassin season, was that half the queens felt like they didn't try. And I think it's because production is like, oh, we want this queen to win. 
uh, the lip sync. So can you just like throw it, like do well enough to where like it's, you know, fun, but make sure you don't win. I mean, that's what I think about with like Kennedy Davenport or Alyssa Edwards, like all of these queens on All Stars 5 who are giving like half of what they're used to. That's kind of what we're getting here. I know Pangina can do a better lip sync than that. I know that Raja can do way better than that. And then I'm like trying to even think about who was the lip sync assassin for episode four. <laughs> I don't remember. Which means that the lip sync was like, oh, it was bad. Chanel, like Chanel. I felt like she wasn't even there to do Bad Reputation. Like she was there to do whatever song they threw at her. Like the, the lip syncs are not good. And so that makes the twist not good. On All Star 6, every lip sync, except for the Cameron Michaels one, was like phenomenal, iconic, amazing, so much fun. And on this season, we haven't had a good lip sync since episode one with Aja and Kahana. Like, did Jessica Wilde do well in Coconuts? Sure, but Raja didn't try. Episodes two and four, like, they were so forgettable that I literally had to, like, go into the depths of my mind to remember what the episode four lip sync was. <sighs> the format is not formatting. The lip syncs aren't lip syncing. So it's not, it's just like a waste. It's like, okay, well then can we just get two people winning? Because you know that if two people are in the competition, winning and lip syncing that it would be intense or just have the bottom two lip sync like those lip syncs would be insane insane these people like fighting to stay on an all-star season is going to be like next level and we haven't seen that since all-stars one so i think the twist is not working i think that for all-stars nine they need to do something different i mean i know that like I did a fantasy season with it. Lots of people have proposed where the winner of the challenge gets to save one of the bottom three and then the other two lips, like something like that. Something, just give it, switch it up a little bit. You know what I mean? Because when it worked so well on All Star 6, it's even more apparent how much it's not working now on All Stars 8, if that makes sense. Another thing is that they're making the same mistakes that they did on All Star 6. Now, All Star 6 is my favorite All Star season, but there's still some things that I'm like, mm, like having the Lip Sync Assassins be so rigged, having the winner of episode one then be the bottom of episode two, like things that were like, we're over it, we're so over it, can we please just like move on? They're continuing to do <laughs> the same things. So it's kind of just like, Okay, if, if everyone's complaining about something, why would you then continue to do it? And, and I guess in this case, like, Kahana being in the bottom episode two, it wasn't rigged, it was deserved, but at this point we're just so tired of that storyline that I think people are like, just throw someone else there, <laughs> let's move on with our lives. <laughs> but also, they're not doing the things that worked super well on All-Star 6. Like, episode one of All-Star 6 was like, one of the best episodes of Drag Race ever. It's one of my favorites. There was the reading challenge. You had the talent show. There was the amazing lip sync. Like, all of these things, and it was, like, amazing. Great reintroduction to the queens. And in this season, they decided let's do a runway, and then let's do a girl group challenge. And I don't think the girl group challenge works as a premiere episode. I didn't like it in Canada versus the World. I didn't like it on All Star 7. I don't like it here. Especially for an all-star season, that first episode is a reintroduction, or to some fans, an actual introduction to some of these queens. You want them to have like their moment in the spotlight. Like show us what, what you are, show us what you're doing right now. And that's why the talent show works so well, because they have the whole stage themselves and like a minute and a half to just do whatever you want and show everyone where you're at right now in your drag career. When you have a girl group challenge with six queens on the stage all doing the same choreo, they all blend together. And you don't get that like introduction to everyone. You don't get to be like, oh, I loved how she did that. Or like, mm, that was fine. Like, I want more from her. Like, everyone just kind of blends together. And I know for me, I had to watch that challenge like seven or eight times to like actually take in how everyone did. Because they're just blobs on a stage at some point. You know what I mean? They're just, it's just everyone doing the same thing and your eyes are going here, there, and everywhere. You're not focusing on anybody. And then we're also lacking those really fun moments in the reading challenge where we're like getting those interactions, those funny moments. Like the first episode was so devoid of any personality, honestly. I mean, we got some fun workroom stuff, but like the reading challenge and the talent show, that's where you really get to know everybody. And I feel like we are still trying to get to know everybody at this point. It's kind of like, okay, like people are on a screen and I'm just like, sure, let's, whatever's happening, like, fine. And specifically for this season, which did have a lot of early outs, something like a talent show is like the perfect way 
to showcase where everyone is at now or what their drag is, period, for people who don't even remember them. Like, I just think that was a huge missed opportunity and it kind of set the season off in a, in a weird direction. Another thing to point out is the weird judging. I, I specifically, episode one, Ross tells James Mansfield, you were off the entire time in that dance, in, in that girl group dancing. Like, you were like two beats behind the entire time. But you're James Mansfield, so I don't really care. Like, so then was she in the top? Was she in the bottom? I don't know. The same thing happens in the ball with Candy Muse. Michelle is like, all of your silhouettes were exactly the same, and it was boring. But you, we like what you're wearing, so... So is she top? Is she bottom? And it's kind of like, okay, and then some episodes you'll have a top three and a bottom two, and then some episodes you have a top four and a bottom... Like, there's no consistency when it's coming to the judging, and it just kind of feels a little jarring, because we're so used to that formula. Three tops and three bottoms, let's move on. And this season, it feels like it's kind of jumbled all over the place. So it's like, who's in the top? Who's in the bottom? Does it matter if you're a high anymore? If there's all these highs and there's no lows? And what happens when there's no low? Like, who's in, like, it's still, it's a lot. Especially for these, like, track record, like, the people who really care about the track record, it's kind of like, well, what, what do we do now? Because <laughs> the track record isn't consistent every single week. And I guess the thing that kind of just culminates all of this is that we are have, there's a lack of cast chemistry. All-Star 6, you had queens from early seasons, new seasons, mid seasons, early outs, mid outs, like finalists all across the board, but it felt like they were all friends or like they all, we knew their relationships, we knew who was friendly with each other, we knew who was like maybe on the side, not really getting along with people. Like we knew the dynamics of that group and I felt like I got to know everybody super well. Even Untucked, you know, they hadn't even switched over to doing deliberations in Untucked yet. I would watch Untucked because I just had fun watching that group. They were a fun group. This season, I don't feel that cast chemistry. And whether that's because of the editing, because they're showing more strategy instead of like the, just the fun moments, or whether they really just weren't vibing as a group together, I don't know. But, you know, looking at the makeup of the two seasons, there's no way I'm going to memorize this, so let me read it. All Star 6 had three early outs, two mid outs, and everyone else made it halfway or further. All Stars 8 has four early outs and two mid outs. So it kind of averages up, like, it's not that much. Like, All Stars 8 does have, does lean a little bit more, like, earlier outs than All Star 6 did, but both of them had plenty of queens who were out early or, you know, fifth out or sixth out. So it's not like a crazy change up, and it's like, well, all these queens just, you know, none of them did good on their early season, so that's why they're not doing good now, and that's why they're not getting along. Like, no, like, there's really not much difference when it comes to the cast makeup. So there should be kind of the same, like, reaction from fans. You know, like, people were obsessed with that All Star 6 cast. Not at first, but then when they got to know them, they're like, yes. People were equally as initially like, mm, with this cast. And I was waiting for that moment where everyone was like, never mind, they're amazing, this is, this is the best. But we haven't gotten there yet. And I feel like that's the show's fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's the show's job to sell us these queens, to make us fall in love with them, to make us fans, so that we go on social media and we say, hashtag Team Candy, hashtag Team Lala, hashtag Team Jimbo. And there's just not that that fire. There's not that, like, drive in the fandom to be like, woo, like, I'm team this person, I'm team this person. Everyone's just kind of like, I'm watching, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting, at least. I, I think that's kind of all I wanted to say. It's a shorter video today, but it's just kind of like looking at what we have so far. I think Snatch Game is going to be the linchpin where people either begin to love this season or people start saying this season is bottom tier like officially, because everyone's kind of, I feel like in the middle right now, they're like, it could still get better or it could continue getting worse. <laughs> and Snatch Game is like that moment where it's like, this is going to determine the entire end game of this competition. So I'm excited for it. I'm definitely excited for it. There's a lot of, there's a lot of queens who I think can do well. Heidi and Jimbo and James and Alexis. So I'm hoping we get some really good performances. I'm hoping we get some more consistent judging and I hope maybe now that there's less queens in the room that we get more moments with just, like, them having fun and engaging and less of the str I guess We're not going to get less strategy. And I guess I kind of feel like a, a jerk because I'm like, I want more strategy. I think more strategy would make this so much better. And then we get that, and I'm like, mm, no. But it's about that balance. It's the balance. And 
and we don't have the balance. You know, before it was like so much personal and like no strategy, but now we have so much strategy, no personal. It's like, can't we just meet, meet in the middle a little bit, please? Is it really that hard? I don't know. I, I had such high hopes for the season and I still am holding out hope that it will get better and I will fall in love with it and it's gonna be an amazing season. But so far, four episodes in, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. But I wanna know your thoughts. Specifically, if you if you love this season, why do you love it? Because I think there are gonna be a lot of people in the comments that are like, yeah, no, this is whatever. So I wanna specifically hear from the people that are like, this is great and here's why. Convince me, sell me All-Stars 8 like it's your job. <laughs> If you are not already, I would love if you would subscribe. The links to all of my social media are in the description below. I'm currently doing on my Instagram story polls for every single runway, every single challenge, getting all of your thoughts throughout All Stars 8. So make sure you follow me on Instagram and check out my story daily for new polls. I hope you all enjoy the Snatch Game. I hope All Stars 8 just kind of soars from here. I would love nothing more than that. But if it doesn't, you know, I'll talk all about it when we get to the Riggery videos. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one.